Hello everyone, it's Kathleen and welcome to uh, Level Up Your English with that Kathleen Anies. So um, happy Monday. I hope your day has been a great one and I hope you had a great weekend. So today what we're going to be learning about is um, <clears throat> going to be talking this, this particular topic I've broken into two parts and um, actually I'll need those in a minute. Uh, so the first part, we're talking about business culture in, um, in America specifically. And um, the first part of it is going to be about the characteristics, the, the specifically American traits of uh, English doing business in America and American uh, the whole development of where those characteristics came from. So, um, and then in the noon edition, in about 12 hours, <laughs> we'll be talking about the modern um, characteristics of the modern office in an American business situation. So I figured that was the best way to break it down because it's such a, it's such a detailed topic and there's really so much that has gone into the development of why we are the way we are when we do business, why we expect what we expect, and um, why there are so many contradictions. I feel that that our our characteristic traits are in many ways contradictory, and yet somehow they all work together and uh, they, they work. So uh, they, they don't always work perfectly, <laughs> but uh, they, they seem to, to work for us. So the first part, so we're going to talk about, let's do a cultural overview in the sense of the, the historical development. Where did our characteristics come from? So there are four main uh four main characteristics that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I'm just going to use the word signify, but that's not the word I'm, I'm looking for. Um, but you can tell you're dealing with an American business person because of these characteristics. First of all, we believe that um, if you have a sustained focus and a um, Sorry, I'm looking at my notes and it's messing me up. I like notes. I like, I, I don't like scripts and sometimes notes feel like scripts to me, but I do want to keep myself on track today. So the first thing, let me rephrase that. So we believe that um, sustained, focused, hard work is going to bring about our success. So that is one of the reasons why we work such long hours and we prioritize work over many other things in our lives. Um, even though, as you'll see later on today, that we do value highly that balance between work and everything outside of work, we really take working hard seriously. Um, and I'll get into where that came from in a minute, but I kind of want to give you the rundown first, and then we'll go back and go through how that developed. So uh, the second characteristic is that um, there's there's a heavy focus on teamwork to get the job done and produce a great product, while at the same time, we also focus on individuality within that team, Okay. Um, in other words, everybody has something valuable to contribute, but we're all working together. All right. Um, the third thing, the third main characteristic is that we value innovation and invention. So we are looking to first, we, first we're going to invent the wheel and then we're going to make it better. That's um and these all sort of tie into this whole um, American dream concept. 
where um, anybody has the ability and the opportunity to make a success of themselves and their lives. And so um, the final thing is that employees expect to be treated fairly, even from early, early on when you had apprentices and, you know, a, a teenager, a 15 year old would apprentice out to then learn the trade and what have you, and was under complete control of the, um, the master skilled artisan there, um, there was still an expectation that there would be fairness involved in the, the whole working situation, even though uh, the idea of what was fair has shifted a little bit. And we as employees understand that we have more say than we thought before, but there's still that expectation of being treated fairly. And again, um, yeah, it all comes down to that American dream. So, and I've mentioned before that the American dream is that when people arrived in America or the Americas, um, this was a land that nobody knew of. The whole rest of the world, the only people that knew of the existence of the Americas were the people that lived there, originally lived there. They didn't know that there was any other that there were any other continents, any other countries, any other peoples, except, you know, the, the people on their, you know, in their spaces. Um, so when people discovered the Americas, when um, the people came from England to the Americas, again, they were searching for India. They had no idea that there was this whole, several, you know, continents, in the way they thought that they were going from England over to India or Australia, whatever it was. They just, we just didn't know it was there. We bumped into it. And so we encountered all of these conditions and people and um, struggles that we never had to deal with before. So many things we were not physically not accustomed to emotionally not accustomed to, um, you know, the weather, we didn't know about the weather, there's disease, all these things. So everything just focused on survival. There were no concepts of, you know, hierarchies and monarchies and things. Um, for the most part, the people that came to the Americas were trying to get away from all of that. The the goal was to get away from the oppression that was happening and to get away the, the um, political oppression, but also the economic oppression and the fact that you could struggle all your life and never get anywhere because of the way things were set up. Um, everything was stacked against you if you were not born into certain positions or where... Um, uh, your everything was about your place. You you better know your place, and you better stay in your place, because we're not going to let you out of it. Um, and it took an extraordinary person or extraordinary circumstances to get you out of those um, your place. And so we we came here to escape from all of that. And so because this was a because this country was completely unknown. There was nothing set up to get in the way of your success. Um, and everybody had to work together to succeed, to just survive, number one, but then to succeed and go beyond surviving, moving into the phase of thriving. That's where we develop that sense of teamwork and we're all in this together and we take pride in the work that we do. Excuse me. Um, so it, it all just, it really revolves around and um, is born from that whole initial, this is driving me crazy, um, that if anyone has any tips on how to get rid of the glare on my glasses, I, I need them to see my notes, but I, 
I can't stand all of these, you know, seeing the screen within my glasses. Anyway, um, but we, we needed to work together in order to survive and then help each other thrive. Uh, and then from there, we were then able to make this better, you know. So I, I mentioned we value invention and innovation. So we needed to invent things and devise things that will help us make the survival thing easier to get more done more efficiently and more effectively so that we could then, okay, this is handled. Now we got to do this. Um, so, it, you know, that's where this was all born of. And then once the survival happened, once the thriving started to happen and, and people were able to relax a little and breathe and know that they were, that they were going to make it through the day alive, um, we could then start focusing on, you know, storing up a little bit of wealth and making our lives even better and relieving a lot of that pressure Um you know, just everybody, even, you know, nowadays, everybody throughout history has wanted to make a better life for themselves. That's why you're learning English. That's why you're here. That's why I'm doing this to help you make a better life for yourself, but also to make a better life for myself. You know, this is what I love doing. Um, my hit, my work history is in life insurance, corporate life insurance. Well, that's not my heart's desire. This is my heart's desire. So, you know, we all want to do things that are going to make our lives better and bring some joy into our lives. So there we go. That's what we did. Uh, you know, you have, once we got to the point where we could relax and start to thrive, we then started to think, okay, how can we do this even better? How can we thrive even better? <laughs> you know, so um, that's where so many of these traits developed. And what was the one I was thinking of? Um, oh, yeah, the um, yeah, and okay, and so I'm thinking of a couple of things here. So the sustained, focused, hard work will bring success. You see that most uh, clearly when you look at um, how the, the concept of farms and ranches. You know, everybody in that, at that point, there were no grocery stores. You know, you had to grow your own food to survive. And um, so everybody had to work hard on the farm, on the ranch. You know, as we started moving west, and we got to the areas where, um, you know, it was easier to raise animals, the cattle, even though, um, excuse me, <laughs> um, it was easier to raise the cattle, even though you still had to try to figure out how to grow some vegetables in this kind of soil. Because, you know, when you get out to the more desert type areas of the country, you know, it's harder to grow fruits and vegetables. So you have to find a way. And the ranching was easier to do and it brought in more money. Um, so, you know, we just figured it out. Everybody, you know, all um, cultures figure it out for their area. But again, I think the difference with America versus the way the rest of the world or m most of the rest of the world developed. Maybe your culture is similar in ours, um, similar to ours where, you know, your area that you, that your culture developed in was more isolated and didn't have all of the contact with the rest of the world. Um, so let me know if that's the case, because um, again, I, I know a lot <laughs> I, I learn a lot, but there are some things I just don't know that I've learned or I don't retain them. So history was not one of them in many ways, in many areas. Um, but at, at any rate, let me know if your culture is one that grew up in an, in an isolated situation. Um, I think I got off track a little bit here, but um, 
so at any rate, you know, to to make a success of a farm, every, you know, people have been farming for millennia. It's hard work and you have to keep at it. You have to keep focused in order to survive. So imagine that, you know, wherever you're from farming. Well, imagine trying to farm in completely new conditions, conditions that you now have to figure out, but you don't have the time to figure them out. So everybody had to work together to figure it out. And you had to work obviously long hours. It was a never ending job. But because this was an open land of opportunity with none of the restrictions that you had in Europe, um, mostly Europe where people came from originally, there weren't those restrictions. This was a land of opportunity. So we knew that if we worked hard and we put the time in, we put the effort and we put what little money we had into this whole farm, the ranch, the whatever it is that we're, we're doing to make a living, that we would succeed and that we would um, build a better life for ourselves. We didn't have the concept anymore of, well, we're stuck here. We can't ever get beyond this. You know, I'm a maid for the governor and I'm never going to the governor of Massachusetts, How whatever the, you know, um, the hierarchy that was put in place just to keep order um, and to, you know, keep things going and keep everybody together and, you know, happy and productive and alive. Um, here in, in America, you could be a maid. Or, you know, uh, um, a, a, a boy working on the farm, but you had the chance to become governor yourself um, or whatever else was, you know, put in place along the way. You had the opportunity to become a person of influence and a person of significance. Um, and so that's it, that whole land of opportunity mentality and understanding is is deeply rooted in us because of what we came from and because you know here we are like a child in a candy store oh my goodness all of this wonderful sweetness is is mine for the taking you know um so it it just really it it is in everything we do, everything we do. Um, so I just want to make sure that I covered everything here. Oh yeah. And the, the other thing is that we expect to be as employees, we expect to be treated fairly. And again, the reason for that is at its core, it's because again, we came here, we gave up everything we had. We meaning the first settlers who came here, um, gave up everything to come to a, a, a place where we would be free from the oppression. We would be free from the mistreatment and the abuses that were happening in the society where we were current, you know, living, where we were living. So we gave all that up so that we would have this opportunity to be treated fairly, to be treated with respect, to have the same chance as, every, as everyone else. And so, again, it's deeply rooted in us for that reason. You know, if I, there's just no other, I can't think of any other example in the, his, the world history that I know, where this whole sense of just this amazing opportunity was laid before you, you know, um, I'm just trying to think, you know, all the different empires, the Roman Empire, all, all the different empires, there was always that level of 
somebody was over you, somebody was above you, somebody was determining how you could live and whether you could live and, and, um, you know, how well you could live. There was always somebody above you um, dictating to you how your life would go. And so coming here, being completely isolated from that and free from that now um, was just a whole other, it's just a whole other kettle of fish, as we say. Um, so I really think that it's important that we understand that. And so, again, um, uh, um, this is just bringing to mind the other thing, too, is that, which I'll bring up uh, this afternoon, is that in the, um, in the American workplace, there is a hierarchy, you know, there's the president of the company, this, the executives and the management and the staff, you know, and, and there is a hierarchy, but because we value the teamwork and because we value the individual aspect, you know, that everyone has a valuable contribution to make, um, and because as a culture, we are much more, um, relaxed, you know, we don't have the different hierarchies. We don't have the, like, there's the, we don't have the monarchy. We don't have, um, different things in place that keep us at a distance from each other. Again, because if you're trying to survive, you can't afford to have that. Everybody has to, you know, the governor was treated the same way as the stable boy. You know, they treated each other pretty much the same. Um, because you just had to get in there and work and survive together. And so we don't have the um, levels of formality in our workplaces that you do in other countries in other areas of the world. Again, because of our beginnings. And so even though there are, there's a whole management system and there's an organizational chart, everyone's expected to, as we say, pull your own weight. You know, think of a, um, a plow horse. You know, many families didn't have horses, <laughs> so they had to pull the plows themselves. And so you're pulling your own weight within the company, within the business. Um, and so when people come here who have extremely formal cultures, it's very difficult to relax and speak up when your boss asks you, what do you think? Or, you know, how's that going to go? And, you know, does anybody have any suggestions? There are many cultures where the question is asked, but you're not expected to answer because the it's someone higher than you has asked it. And you, if you answered, you would have them lose face or whatever the situation may be. We don't have that here. <laughs> so um, that is definitely something that it takes people time to get used to. Uh, but, you know, challenge yourself. If, if you're not in an office situation just yet, challenge yourself to you know, put yourself in a situation and imagine how you would handle that. And, you know, or if you are in an office situation currently or dealing with Americans um, in business, then outside of a meeting or, you know, before you get to work, if you know you're going to have a meeting, think about the things that will be discussed and then practice you know, beforehand, practice how you might respond. What ideas could you bring up or what ideas do you have that um, would really make a difference? And then pra just, just practice bringing it up in the meeting and challenge yourself to do it because Americans value that. Uh, because when you think about it, if you're in a situation where, you know, you're maybe you're the community was dealing with, you know, 
people are dying of disease. Well, if you had a solution to how can we save all these people and you didn't speak up, the rest of the community is not going to be happy with you, right? <laughs> so think about it that way. Um, that's why we value um, the opinions, because you might have the very solution we need. And, um, you know, yes, there's, there are, you know, many offices and many business cultures, you know, individual businesses may have certain cultures that we would call toxic, where um, even though these are the traits that we fully believe in, the way individuals are within that company would discourage it and actually kind of ruin it. Um, that's not how most, you know, that's not the main um thrust, I suppose, of, of American businesses. We want to succeed. Everybody, we, we want to live the American dream and, and we put in our hard work uh, because we know it's supposed to bring us success. And, and that brings me to another thing too, is that um, I'm trying to think of the time frames. Um, up until, certainly up until the 60s, the 1960s, maybe into the 70s as well. Um, the culture used to be where you were loyal, you know, you stayed with a company for a long time. And many people, um, I know many people in my own family, my own history uh, or genealogy, uh, I'm losing the, I don't have the right word there, but, you know, my ancestors, they, they were with the same company for 20, for their entire career. You know, they started out, you know, as a, as a young boy emptying garbage and, you know, emptying trash cans uh, in the offices. And then they worked their way up and they were there forever. Um, and they got their retirement benefits and this and that and the other thing. And the company was loyal to them. Well, in the 80s, I think the 1980s really... Um, it might have been before that, but certainly I remember the change then, um, hearing about the change and seeing the changes, um, where the companies now weren't loyal to you. And so that bred a lot of discontentment. And so now we have a, now we have this thing where, you know, if you're not happy with your company, you just move along and you find someone who will treat you better or pay you better or whatever. But there's not that sense of, you know, loyalty to each other anymore. Um, I think people are, there are some businesses, some, some companies, individual companies who are really trying to say, wait a minute, that was a good thing. And if we don't treat our employees properly, how can we expect to, to, you know, have them want to create a good product or anything like that? So that's changing. But the other major thing that we valued, and I think, I think it's it's so ingrained in our in our um, cultural DNA that even though we don't have it anymore, we long for the days, even, you know, the, the young people who have never experienced that, they somehow know it should be there, but this is how they know to do it. Oh, well, you just change jobs all the time. Um, but something in them is saying, wait, no, I think it should be different. But again, you don't, you don't know what it is and you can't put your finger on it, but, and it's just so ingrained in us that, you know, you work hard, you devote yourself to your, um, the company, and they in turn reward you. That used to be a major, um, a major sense of pride, I suppose, um, for us. Um, and so it is still there within us as a culture, even though you'll see in this this afternoon that we've gotten away from it somewhere in there we're still hoping for it and we still long for it but um so let me just recap because i know we're coming up on our time um and again this is just such an in-depth 
topic that we could probably take a whole year and really delve into this. But this is just to give you a rough idea of the American business culture. This particular segment is to give you the understanding of what the what the the main traits are and where they came from, how they developed. So then this afternoon, I'm going to be talking about the modern day office, things like that, um, and how you can um, succeed in the modern day office and the business situation. So to recap, um, uh, the typical characteristics of an American business person or the American culture the American work culture, I suppose, is that we believe that sustained hard work will bring us success, that we have this land, that this land of opportunities, that we have any opportunity that we want is there for us to succeed uh, if we put in the hard work for it. The second thing is that there is a heavy focus on teamwork. But we also, within that team, we value and expect individuals to make their contributions and, you know, speak up and be heard because they might have that valuable solution that the team needs to succeed. And the third one is that we value invention and innovation. So like I said before, we First, we invent the wheel and then we improve on it. And so we're not remaking the wheel. We're not rebuilding it. We're making it better. Um, if it can be made better, we're looking to make it better. Um, we're always looking to make it better. We're okay if it can't, if it, if we've, you know, if that's the best it can be, we're okay, but we're always having fresh eyes on things. And then um, finally, that as employees, we expect to be treated fairly and um, at different stages of our times, uh, you know, of our history, we have a different understanding of what fair is. And as each successive generation, um, you know, settles in on, okay, this is fair. The next one starts from this point and says, no, wait a minute. Now this is fair. And this is only right that, that we should be treated this way. And again, these all come from the fact that when Amer when the United States of America was born um, and people started coming here, people came here, number one, to escape the oppression and the, 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 Yes, the political oppression, but the financial oppression and the emotional oppression of the way things were in whichever country they came from, um, most, you know, originally from England. And so, um, you know, we came to this place that we're now realizing nobody has ever heard of nobody has explored nobody has ruined it yet nobody has put their mark on it and said you can't do anything we have a wide open space to do whatever to become whomever we choose and again as long as we work hard and we stay focused we can do that so um that's you know why we expect to be treated fairly and again Again, because we don't have, there wasn't that, um, um, I'm just going to say monarchical, you know, the, the levels of, I can't think of the word. Oh my goodness. Well, you know how the monarchy, everybody has their place and you don't go, you know, these people up top have everything to say about how you live. We didn't have any of that. Nobody was here to tell us how to live. And so again, everybody was on the same level. That's what I was, that's the phrase I was looking for. Everybody was on the same level because everybody was in the same boat and everybody had to survive. So there we go. <laughs> okay. I hope this was helpful. Um, again, I think because the topics are so deep, and I, we literally could talk about this all year and just kind of get 
things covered, you know. Um, so because they're so deep, sometimes my mind goes in different places and I want to tell you all these different things, but um, trying to stay focused on my notes that are over here. <laughs> so I really hope this was helpful. And um, let me know in the comments if anything struck you as like, oh, wow, I had no idea. You know, what was the most surprising thing that you learned from today's talk? And also let me know if you come from a culture who developed similarly, because clearly I don't know anything about anything <laughs> in the whole scheme of things. I know a lot about English and, and all of the stuff I know about English and communication and things like that. And I know a lot of general things about history and stuff, but I don't know everything. And I'll be the first to admit that, but just don't tell my siblings, okay? <laughs> um, anyway, so let me know if any of this rings true for you and in your culture, or, or if any of it is surprising to you. And um, don't forget to ask me your questions. All right, so join me at 12 noon, 12 p.m. Eastern Time today and we'll do part two which will talk about the, the characteristics of the modern um, American business world. Uh, we'll focus a lot on the office and how things work there and therefore how you can do business within that situation. Okay so great. I'm so glad you were here today. I hope everything has gone well for you and I hope you have a super day and we'll We'll see you on in a few hours and we'll definitely see you next week. All right. You just have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>